Hello. Today we're going to be looking at colonial life. Nations began to be guided by the concept of mercantilism, the idea that a nation's power comes from their wealth. To ensure that the colonies remained profitable, they passed the Navigation Acts, a series of laws to restrict colonial trade. Seeking greater control of the colonies, the king merged several colonies into the Dominion of New England and placed them under Edmund Andros as the royal governor. The colonists arrested Andros and sent him away. While the colonies belonged to England and the British officials were involved in colonial policy, for the most part they did not rule the colonies very strictly. Edmund Burke, a British legislator, term termed this practice as salutary neglect, meaning that the colonies benefited from being left alone. The rocky ground in the northern colonies was not good for growing crops. Many northerners practiced subsistence farming, or just growing enough food to feed themselves. Timber, rum, shipbuilding, textiles, ironworks, and many other goods were exported from the northern colonies. The southern colonies developed a plantation economy. Plantations are large, single-crop farms. Most farms, however, were small. And this brings us now to slave labor. The southern economy became dependent on slave labor. The triangular trade brought slaves across the Atlantic through the Middle Passage. Between 1700 and 1760, the number of Africans in the Americas increased by more than 10 times to about 325,000. Many Americans were heavily influenced by the Enlightenment thinkers like John Locke and Baron de Montesquieu. Their ideas greatly influenced the American form of government. The Great Awakening was a religious vi revival led by the Puritan clergyman Jonathan Edwards. The French and Indian War. The Seven Years' War, which was going on in Europe, spilled over into the Americas, where the French joined with some Indian nations to attack England. In the Americas, this was known as the French and Indian War. The colonies were also involved. Eventually, the British besieged Quebec in New France, which is now Canada, and the city fell. The French surrendered the following year in 1760. The Treaty of Paris officially ended the war in 1763. A sense of colonial unity developed. Benjamin Franklin proposed the Albany Plan of Union, which was the first attempt at unifying the colonies, although it was never adopted. France lost the lands east of the Mississippi River, and Spain lost Florida, but gained territory in Louisiana. The war cost England a lot of money, and they felt that the colonists should help to pay for the cost of the war. The war also brought many Native American groups together in Pontiac's rebellion, but in 1766, Pontiac agreed to a peace treaty. To avoid more conflicts with Native Americans, the British issued the Proclamation of 1763 which prohibited the colonists from moving further west, but many did in violation of this treaty. 